Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be talking about glycogen storage diseases. This is a group of diseases, not just one. And each disease type is characterized by a deficiency of a different enzyme somewhere in this pathway right here for glycogen metabolism. And depending on which enzyme is mutant and deficient, there's going to be slightly different clinical features that cause the disease to either be milder or more severe. Now the liver and skeletal muscle can both synthesize and break down glycogen using a series of enzymes involved in glycogen metabolism. And you can look at this pathway over here. We're not going to discuss it in a lot of detail because we've done that in previous videos. Remember when the liver synthesizes glycogen, it breaks it down mainly to supply all the other tissues of the body with glucose. So the liver is much more altruistic or selfless, we would say. In contrast, skeletal muscle cells are a lot more selfish. Remember that they are very, very metabolically active, and so they're going to be consuming the glucose from the glycogen that they make. And so when any one of these enzymes in this pathway is mutant, it is hypofunctional. It has a loss of function, and that's usually what we mean when we say the enzyme is deficient. That leads to an impairment of glycogen metabolism and an accumulation of any one of these metabolites. So take, for example, this debranching enzyme. This enzyme converts limit dextrins into glucose 1-phosphate. If this enzyme is deficient, are we going to be able to convert limit dextrins into glucose 1-phosphate? No. So not only will glucose 1-phosphate go down, but we'll hold on to and accumulate these limit dextrins because we're not able to transform them. And so when you start accumulating this metabolite, it builds up and builds up, and eventually it gets to the limit of toxic accumulation. There's so much of it. And we get so much buildup of those metabolites that it leads to inflammation of the cells, mitochondrial dysfunction, and oxidative stress. And all of these things in turn cause cellular damage and eventually cell death. And this leads to, over time, what we call glycogen storage diseases, or GSDs, deficiency of any enzyme in this pathway. Now, we'll get into the defective enzymes in a few minutes and the conditions that result from that. But before we do that, understand that each of these conditions can, can present differently from mild all the way to severe. But they all share some common signs and symptoms that we're going to look at in this table. So symptoms first appear in babies or in very young children. So glycogen storage diseases are going to be a pediatric conditions because that's normally where the symptoms begin to manifest. Usually the children are not going to grow fast enough. They're going to have heat intolerance and not feel comfortable in hot weather. They'll bruise easily. They'll have hypoglycemia chronically, so low blood sugar. A lot of these conditions over here are going to result in an enlarged liver. They can also have a swollen belly. And they're also going to tend to have weak muscles and low muscle tone because not only is the liver affected by this, but also the skeletal muscle. Uh, for some forms of this where they can exercise a little bit, they're often going to have muscle pain and cramping during exercise. And then a lot of times in infants, you'll actually see acidosis and high blood cholesterol. Normally, the diagnosis begins by just checking for some of these symptoms and also for an enlarged liver or weak muscles. So to do this, the physician will often order a blood test to actually look at the levels of these particular enzymes because sometimes when the muscle and liver become damaged, those enzymes dump into the blood and so they're going to be higher than expected. And when they're higher than expected, one of the possibilities would be a glycogen storage disease. Also, the physician may order a biopsy to actually analyze the liver directly or the muscle directly, and they're actually going to quantify specific enzyme levels. And if there's less of that enzyme that's functional, that may suggest a glycogen storage disease. And also prenatal tests, so determining the risk for having a child with glycogen storage disease based on the genetic profiles of the two parents. So type 1, or von Gierke disease, is where the defective enzyme is either glucose 6-phosphatase right here, or this transport system that facilitates getting glucose out of the cytoplasm of the cell into the blood. Now remember how I said that skeletal muscles are selfish and they consume all the glucose from glycogen breakdown? They'd actually go down this pathway right here to form pyruvate and lactate. 
whereas the liver is altruistic and it sends the glucose into the blood to supply all the peripheral cells. That's going this way. So skeletal muscles will not be affected by this mutation. It'll really just be the liver and even the kidney to some extent because the kidney performs gluconeogenesis and this enzyme is also needed in gluconeogenesis, which the kidney also does. In type 1 GSD, what you'll typically see is massive enlargement of the liver, failure to thrive, severe hypoglycemia, ketosis, hyperuricemia, hyperlipidemia. So one of the more severe manifestations of GSD. Type 2 is a mutation in lysosomal alpha-1,4 glucosidase. So you can see that one up here. This is Pompe disease. This is going to affect all organs, not just the liver, not just the skeletal muscle. And what you typically see here is cardiorespiratory failure as the cause of death. Normally these individuals are going to die before the age of two. And so you could make an argument that Pompe disease is the most severe glycogen storage disease. Now type 3 is called Cori's disease. This is Cori's disease right here. This is a deficiency of what we call the debranching enzyme, which is sometimes called amylo 16 glucosidase. This is going to affect muscle and liver because this is directly involved in glycogen metabolism specifically. This is going to present similarly to type 1 von Gierke disease, but it's going to follow a milder course, so it's not as severe as type 1. Type 4 is called Anderson's disease. This is going to affect the branching enzyme right here, which is going to polymerize UDP glucoses, specifically the glucose part, into the glycogen polymer. This is going to affect the liver and the spleen, and it's going to cause progressive cirrhosis of the liver. Liver failure is normally the cause of death also before the age of 2. So kind of like Pompe disease type 2, you could also make an argument that this is the most severe of the glycogen storage diseases, both 2 and 4 causing death before the age of 2. Now type 5 is going to be McArdle's disease, and this is going to be a deficiency of the enzyme phosphorylase A. Now notice there's two forms of phosphorylase A. There's a distinct form in the muscle and a distinct form in the liver. McArdle's disease type 5 affects the one in skeletal muscle only. And so the effects of McArdle's disease are going to be limited ability to perform strenuous exercise due to painful muscle cramps. But otherwise the patient is normal and well developed. So definitely one of the less severe glycogen storage diseases. Type 6 is the other deficiency of phosphorylase A specific to the liver. Obviously, this is going to affect the liver. This is going to present similarly to von Gierke disease, type 1, but again, it's going to follow a milder course, very similar to Cori's disease, type 3. Now, type 7 glycogen storage disease is going to be a deficiency of this enzyme, phosphofructokinase, which is actually the third enzyme in glycolysis. So it's not explicitly shown in the figure, but it would be right around here. Recall that glucose 6-phosphate is converted to fructose 6-phosphate by phosphoglucoisomerase, and then fructose 6-phosphate is converted to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate by phosphofructokinase. And this specifically affects the form of phosphofructokinase in skeletal muscle. So that being said, it's going to present similarly to McArdle's disease, which is the type 5 glycogen storage disease. Okay? So remember, these individuals are going to be normal and well-developed, but might have some exercise intolerance. So again, type 7 will be a milder form of this disease type. Then we have type 8 glycogen storage disease. This is going to be a deficiency of phosphorylase kinase, and this is specifically going to affect the phosphorylase kinase in the liver. This will manifest as mild liver enlargement, mild hypoglycemia, but again, this is nowhere near as dangerous as types 1, 2, and 4 that we talked about earlier. Then we have type 8 glycogen storage disease, which is a deficiency of this enzyme up here, phosphorylase kinase. Now you'll notice this actually says type 9 here. I'll get to that in a minute. In any case, phosphorylase kinase is necessary for activating phosphorylase B into its active form, phosphorylase A, that we saw a few minutes ago. This form of phosphorylase kinase is found in the liver. As a result of this deficiency, you would have mild liver enlargement, mild hypoglycemia. Again, this is one of the milder glycogen storage diseases, nowhere near as severe as types 1, 2, and 4, which are arguably the most severe of all of these. 
The type 9 up here is actually in reference to a different isoform of phosphorylase kinase that you would actually find in other cells like skeletal muscle. And so that being said, it would present similarly to type 5 McArdle's disease. Okay. Now the reason up here you see glycogen storage disease type 9 written reference to the same enzyme is because there's different isoforms of the enzyme. Type 8 refers to a deficiency of phosphorylase kinase that's found in the liver. This one might be in skeletal muscle, and so it's going to present slightly differently because it affects a different tissue. So type 9 might actually uh, present similarly to McArdle's disease, which is type 5, that also affects this system in skeletal muscle. Also understand that there are other glycogen storage diseases not shown here. So they actually go up to about 14, and the other ones are normally going to be deficiencies of enzymes in glycolysis down here or in the feeder pathways by which other carbohydrates send their metabolites into some intermediate in glycolysis. So there are other ones, but we're not going to cover those here. One more note here. Types 1 through 7, all of these here except for 8, these are all going to be inherited in an autosomal recessive manner. So the genes for 1 through 7 are somewhere in the autosomes, chromosomes 1 through 22. And the fact that they're recessive means that in order to actually develop a glycogen storage disease, the mother has to donate one of the recessive alleles, and then the father also has to donate a recessive allele. So that means the child would have to be homozygous recessive in order to develop the glycogen storage disease. If one of the parents uh, donated a dominant allele, they would be heterozygous and would not actually develop a glycogen storage disease. And then type 8 here is going to be sex-linked, so much more common in males. Now the treatments for glycogen storage diseases are variable. For glycogen storage diseases 1, 3, and 4, normally the person's going to follow a special diet to help control the symptoms and then also certain medications. For other types of glycogen storage diseases like type 5 and any of these others that are similar to type 5, like 7 and then 9 that we talked about earlier, Basically, the person's going to limit their exercise, especially in the heat, uh, due to that exercise intolerance and excessive cramping. And then advancements in modern medicine have given us enzyme replacement therapy. So if you have hypofunctional enzymes, you can actually replace the enzymes with fully functional ones to help circumvent the effects of the deficiency. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of glycogen storage diseases, their pathophysiology, and how to differentiate them based on which enzyme is defective. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.